Hi there, so in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how we create grunge-like text in Final Cut Pro 10. Now we're going to use a couple of different image elements within Final Cut Pro um, and the first is an uh, image we're generating in Photoshop and we'll have a little look at how I've created that but I'm not going to run into too much detail um, with the Photoshop file creation itself but I will leave a download for the file that I've used um, to create this kind of broken up text but it could, should give you a good idea um, of what you need to create or the kinds of files you need to work with. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So basically um, we've got this basic type um, which is just a simple type that you can use in Final Cut Pro 10 and then we've applied an image mask to it um, using a particular layer technique um, in Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so it kind of cuts through the type and allows us to um, show the image in the background um, through the type, the video in the background through the type. Okay, so this first section is just the type itself. And then I've just, to demonstrate how it can work in a real example, just added a blur in the background, the type fades in, and then we switch between the type in focus and the background in focus um, as this surfer starts to surf this wave in Honolulu Bay and Maui. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just break this down and have a look at how this was created. So if we come to one of these compound clips and double click on it, then we're basically opening up a set of layers. Okay, now in these layers, we've got two things. One is um, a image layer, okay, which you can see is this Photoshop um, layer. It's a PNG file that's been saved out from Photoshop. And then the layer below is editable text. So if we double click on there, we can still edit this text, um, we can change it. So in adding this effect, we haven't lost that ability to edit the text, which is really nice and gives you that flexibility to kind of work on the text after you've actually uh, added effects to it. Okay, um, and obviously the effect that I've added, this kind of layered effect, um, is also um, over the whole screen. So you can see as I move this image around, as I move the text around, um, the image in the background is kind of changing. So you can find the, the kind of sweet spot for the text um, in this layer because in some spots the different letters may not be that legible as you're kind of cutting in to those different parts of the letters. Okay, this will update on the timeline. So when I click back, basically we're going to uh, have that update on the timeline and it will render out uh, once I've kind of moved that around and done that. Okay, so let's go have a look at the Photoshop file that we've created here. So if we jump into Photoshop, basically what we have is a black and white image. Um, I've created with my brushes um, a kind of customized brush which is this triangle and I've essentially flipped between black and white to kind of give this textured effect and so it cuts into the type um, using the black and white mask once we're actually um, inside Final Cut Pro 10. So we can keep kind of working this up. Now you don't need to use this particular brush um, but you can create your own and kind of get a nice effect um, with your own style, your own design. So once that's saved out, um, I haven't got any layers in this file. I've kept it as a single background layer. Now one other thing that I have done to the file is I've just kind of bumped the, the contrast a little bit so that if we go to image adjustment and levels in Photoshop, then basically what I've tried to do is not have any kind of pure black in there. So I've just bumped up the output levels. And this, what this means is that even though I'm cutting into the text, I'm still allowing the edge of that font um, to be a little bit more uh, visible. So particularly these kind of harder black areas will really cut through the type um, and stop the edge of that type being visible. So I can push the contrast, but then also just push this up so that we get a kind of softer cutting into the text because it's quite easy to break up the type to the point where it's completely illegible um, using an effect like this. So once that's happened, um, the effect will update and you can see it's updated in my type there. There was a little flash. Sometimes the PNGs can take a little bit of time to update within Final Cut Pro depending on uh, what you're doing and the speed of your machine. So um, be patient, wait for your images to update um, to see the changes. So it's updated live so the image has remasked itself using that black and white image. Okay, so let's create a new timeline. So I'm just gonna copy this background clip and we'll run through all the steps to create the text um, and add um, the, the kind of effect onto there um, using the layer techniques. So we'll go to File, New and Project. And I'll just call this Hona Lua Bay Type Tutorial. Okay, so now, so now we've got this set up. I'm just gonna paste in, um, I've copied that original bit of video, okay? So we've got this video of the waves rolling in, small waves for Honolulu Bay, uh, rolling in 
and then eventually this guy catches the wave. So basically we want to time our type to blur out and fade out um, just as he's about to catch the wave. Okay, so we'll just pull the beginning of this clip in a little bit. Okay, so the first step here is to go in and add the basic type. So I'm just going to turn off my scrubbing so that we don't see the image flushing around too much. So I'm going to go to my type options here. Okay, and I'm going to search all type and just type in basic or BAS and I should get the basic title uh, pop up. So I'm going to drag this across the timeline and we'll edit the type first, just make it a bit bigger and uh, type in Honolulu Bay as our title. So Okay, and then we'll select all that and then just push the size of that type right up. Okay, and this time I'm going to make it Helvetica bold. Um, it's going to kind of accentuate the effect a little bit. Okay, and so once we have our text added down to the timeline now, we're now going to go and drag our graphic down. So I'm going to click up here and drag down this graphic. Okay, and then just stretch this out until it's filling that whole area of the graphic. So now, once that's done, I need to go ahead to my video area here and just scroll down. And if you don't see the video inspector, go to Window and Show Inspector, which will be visible there if your inspector is not visible. Okay, we'll scroll down here. And what we're looking for is these compositing modes. Now, the compositing modes allow us to control the opacity of a layer. Okay, so you can see we can increase and decrease the opacity. But what we want to use is the blend modes that we have here. Okay, so we have some different blend modes for subtracting, um, which will add some cool effects for darkening an image. Um, and then also, if we go down to the bottom, we have these options to stencil a luma and silhouette luma. Okay, so we're going to choose stencil luma, which is basically going to stencil out and make more visible the whiter areas of the image. Okay, so you can see in the background here, we're kind of fading out that background image because we've got um, this stencil over the top of it. So this is kind of a cool effect in its own right, but we want to contain it so that the stenciling is just happening on the text. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these two, okay, and go to File, New, and Compound Clip. Okay, and that's basically going to group those two clips together as a compound clip. Okay, and we'll call this Honolulu Type Grunge. Okay, and now it's going to limit that effect just to the text itself. So you can see now I've got my type and those edges of the type are being cut into by the darker parts of the image. Okay, so we can see in here these darker parts of the image once we're in our main timeline here, when we play through, it's actually transparent. Okay, now we could bump this up a little bit. So if we go to Photoshop, um, we could increase the contrast here a little to kind of cut into the edge of that image a little bit more. So so if we go to image adjustments and levels, okay, and just pull in from the left hand side there, we can add a little bit more information into the dark areas of the image. So you can see my image contrast is bumping up a little bit there. Okay, and if we click OK and save that, we'll take a couple seconds, but then in Final Cut Pro 10, you can see now we've just kind of sliced into that image a bit more. So you can kind of go back and forth, play with your Photoshop image, add some more brush effects, um, and then work on it that way. So for instance, if we go to Photoshop and we pick a different um, brush tool, okay, so we'll grab the regular brush, but then we'll flip this um, to a pencil, okay, and I'll just make this nice and small, okay, and I'm going to make this black, so it's going to slice into the image with this brush, and I'll just kind of paint some lines across the middle there, which is going to basically cut into the, the image. So if we go back to Final Cut Pro 10 now, you'll see that we've got some kind of lines uh, coming up there. So if we go to view 100%, you'll see those lines that I've just drawn are now cutting in um, to the image behind. So I can add some more, save it, until I get something that I'm, I'm happy with. Okay, so we can slice and cut into the text and you can see once we view it 100% here, we're getting a really nice effect um, on that text. And the text is still editable. So if we double click on the text here, 
jump into it, go to the layer below. We can now um, do things like editing the color. So if I go to the face here, okay, I can edit the color of my type. So let's make this a nice light yellow. Okay, we go back, then we've got that nice light yellow there. We'll fit this back to the screen and you can see we're kind of slicing into that image. So let's go ahead now and add the second part of this tutorial, which is how to add the blur um, into the background of this image. Okay, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is scroll back to the beginning of our clip here. We're gonna keep the text in focus right at the beginning, but we're gonna add a transition here. So I'm gonna use the default transition, which is a cross dissolve. So Command and T will bring that up. So my text now is gonna fade in at the beginning. Okay, and I wanna leave the background blurred as I'm doing this. So I'm gonna add a blur effect um, to, my, to both layers actually. And then we're gonna keyframe that so that we can switch the blur from the background to the text um, as we come into the, the kind of action of the shot here. So we'll go to our effects across here on the right hand side. We're gonna grab the, the Gaussian blur. So we're in the blur section of our effects already. And we'll drag this across to both of these clips. Okay. And then for our text, I'm just gonna remove that completely. So we're gonna to come to Gaussian blur and just drop that right down to zero. Okay, so I still have nice sharp text here. We don't want that blurred yet, but we still have the blur effect there for when we need to um, keyframe it out. So I'm gonna come ahead in time here. My background is nice and blurred there. Okay, and then well, basically, I'm just gonna turn the blur off here in my effects. I just wanna find the spot where that surfer drops onto the wave, and that's the point at which I wanna do the switch. Okay, so I think it's pretty soon after this. Okay, so yeah, this is it. So just before this, we're gonna switch. So I'm gonna move my, my title up here. Okay, and I will come back to my video layer in the background, add the blur, and then I'm gonna keyframe that, okay? So adding a keyframe there basically now means that I can adjust this at this point um, and have some animation between different keyframes. So I'm gonna come to around this point just play through that for the timing. Okay, so around about here, we'll now add another keyframe. And then between those two keyframes for the video in the background, we're gonna blur that out. So I'm just gonna go ahead in time here and drop that blur back down to zero and then jump back to the previous keyframe here and just come ahead a little in time. Okay, so now I'm gonna keyframe my text layer. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here for my text layer for the amount of blur. I'm gonna leave it at zero, and then I'm gonna come ahead in time and then increase the blur, okay? to around 60, 70%, something like that. So once that's done, I'll just pull this back in, okay? I'm gonna add another transition at the end. So Command T to add a transition. So we'll get that blur and the transition at the same time. So the text is gonna blur out and then the background is gonna come into focus. So we'll just let that render out for a second or two and then play it back in real time. Okay, so let's come ahead and we'll play this right through from the top. So we've got our blurred background, our text fades in, we come ahead in time, title is there, and then at this point in time, we should fade out and the background comes into focus. And that looks beautiful. And then we drop into the wave. Perfect. We could play with the timing there a little bit, but that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So that is how to add a grunge effect to text um, using an image from Photoshop. And you can download a lot of textures online. These textures you don't necessarily need to make yourself, um, but um, it's kind of fun to, to do the whole process yourself. You have complete design control there as well. Um, and then you will have a nice looking uh, grungy text, which you can cut into, which is editable and which you can um, reuse um, in different projects. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. I hope you enjoyed my Final Cut Pro tutorials um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.